and welcome to this month's Janome Stitch Club. My name is Julia Langley and I am one of the Janome educators and the idea of this club is to look at your sewing machines, the stitches, feet, attachments etc and just try to get you looking more creatively perhaps at some of the features that you've never looked at and today what I wanted to look at is something that's very close to my heart. It's one of my favourite techniques and um, it's a very traditional technique and I do it both by hand and machine and one thing that interests me greatly with sewing machines is the fact that they can be used um, as they are a tool to be used not just to uh, make things quicker but also to make things easier and certainly something that I have found as I'm getting older I am struggling with my hands a lot more and some of the techniques and the things, the crafts, not just sewing, but things that I used to be able to do really easily are getting more difficult. And it's making me look to the machine more and more to help me to recreate those techniques that I have traditionally done by hand um, and how I can recreate those on the machine to still get the finish that I want. And one of those is needle turn applique. Now, something like um, this, for example, this has all been done by hand. Now, it's a lovely technique. It's one of my favourite techniques. I've done it for years and years and years. And um, as I say, there I, I've started, because I've always traditionally done it by hand, it's not until um, I started teaching that I started realising that not everybody loves hand sewing. I thought, you know, I thought everyone did, but no. A lot of people absolutely loathe and detest hand sewing or find it really difficult for all manner of reasons. And so that is where all these fantastic stitches that we get on our sewing machines really come into their own. Now we've looked at satin stitches, we've looked at blanket stitches, we've looked at um, decorative stitches as well over the course of, oh gosh, two years now I think it is. So what I wanted to do was look at one very specific stitch. Now you may or may not have this specific stitch on your sewing machine, but you will certainly have other stitches that you can use um, at, in equal measures um, to get a, a similar effect. So if I show you on here, lots and lots of different blanket stitches. What we're trying to recreate is that stab stitch that you use with a needle turn and the one that does that best because I haven't got my glasses on is this one here okay now I think you can see it's like three or four little tiny stitches and then a little v all right so as I say if you don't have this specific stitch on your machine you will have along here and I'll go through these again when I'm on the machine but you will have other options in your blanket stitches or even your blind hem stitch. And as I say, when I get to the machine, I will go through those. So what we're trying to do and why I particularly like this technique is that when generally you applique, you, you get quite a flat finish. We've done an awful lot of bond webbed applique, um, things with satin stitch, things with... Um, blanket stitches as well but what we're looking at this time is something like this where I think you can see look so much texture going on on there so I've gone for a very traditional shape the tulip this is going to be a cushion um, a cushion cover in the end so this is as far as I've got but I think you can see look how stuffed I have actually stuffed these shapes okay and given it a slightly more modern modern twist on what is a very very traditional pattern and I want to show you how first of all to get your shapes ready to then stitch on the machine so there's it's a sort of two-part technique of how to do the first thing the needle turn and get that effect um, and then how to stitch it on the machine. So that's enough of my waffle. Let's go over and have a look at how we do it. 
so these are a couple of the shapes on the templates and this is as i say they're very traditional this is the tulip um and then you can either use this as a leaf shape or sometimes i'll add it in as i'm going to do today as a contrast color so i've got my scrap of fabric that i was going to use and this is sewing interfacing um, I think sewing is the better one to use because then you can't have any incidents with the ironing board. That's for sure, the iron. Um, and also, I don't actually want to stick anything down. The The idea of this technique is that it leaves the, the actual applique with, it gives you more options. It makes it look a little bit puffier. So I don't want anything that is sticky because that's just going to take us back to where we are with Bonderweb, for example. So... I can draw around the shapes that I'm using. I'm just going to use a biro so that you can see exactly a bit better what I'm doing. And this line is actually going to become your stitching line. So do make sure you can see it. Okay, so depending on how many I want to do, and it's quite good with scraps because look, I can I can fit them together. I need at least half an inch between because I'm going to stitch round here and then we're going to trim them up. So don't put them too close. Make sure that you're leaving a gap. But as I say, this is a really good one for scrappy for scrappy projects, appliques, etc. Um, and what I like to do is. Often, if I'm doing a project, I will also do extras so that I have got extras, sort of, I've got a, a little tub with all kinds of shapes, you know, ready done, just in case, fancy a little, also for if I'm, I'm demonstrating the technique, for example. So I'm going to do those in that and then look for a slightly different colour. And I'm going to keep that because I might use that. So these two leaves I can just cut because I'm cutting off the yardage here of this particular colour. Just to make that smaller. And then a couple of pins just to pin in the centre to hold that in place. Now you'll notice I'm actually putting this, and this is really important, you need to make sure it's going on the right side okay and we're actually stitching on the right side um, you'll you'll see why but that that is quite important sometimes if you're using a plain fabric that's not going to notice or make any difference but certainly when you're using these make sure that this is on the actual right side of the fabric okay and then we're going to go to the machine First things first, let's look at feet. Uh, you may have this, uh, your applique foot, the satin stitch, which is nice and clear and runs under there. My preferred one for this technique is this, the F2, which is the same, but it's completely open here. And I like that because it means that as I'm actually going around these shapes, I can really see exactly where I'm going and maneuver and there's also the shorter uh, applique foot as well uh, I'll put a little picture up in the corner of that one but as I say my favorite for this one is this I think it's um, it's the custom zigzag foot again I'll put a picture up in the corner of the proper name in case you haven't got it and want to find it so let's pop that one on so this is what we're stitching okay but the important thing here is the stitch length okay this is quite curvy the little leaves are going to be even curvier as we come in here so the curvier the line that i'm trying to do the shorter the stitch length that i'll use so I'm on my regular straight stitch, but I am going to take that stitch length down. It was on 2.4, which is the kind of serving suggestion. And I'm going to take that down to about 1.5, maybe even a bit less, actually, 1.3, 1.2. Judge it by how it's stitching out. Now I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. 
okay because i want you to see exactly what's going on so on this foot there's a little mark here and this this here and this is what i want to keep in line with this stitching line that i've got okay so as i start and i'm going to put my pivot on if you don't have a pivot you can use your knee lift or just keep your hand here so that you can literally just lift your i've got my hand under next to the presser foot so that i can just lift and turn lift and turn as i'm going around this shape okay so as we go along there we go i need to lift so one thing i wanted to just go through anyone who's got their pivot feature on their machine so i'm talking about uh, atelier 7 9 uh, 9 4 50 9 uh, for 80 cm7 cm8 etc etc if you have this feature do bear in mind that within the settings and that's the little spanner down here i'm going to go because this is a, a embroidery machine as well so i need to go into ordinary sewing and i'm going to go through the screens and we've got all sorts of choices of things we can do here and under ordinary sewing i will get foot height for pivoting now this is going to really really help here because i can take that right down at the moment it's on three millimeters if i was quilting for example i might have it on three millimeters or even higher depending on the loft of the batting that i'm quilting with of how high i want to lift that presser foot every time as i'm maneuvering around now when i'm doing something like this where i'm literally just on look very very uh, small sandwich um, thin sandwich shall we say more of a an afternoon tea sandwich i've just got the fabric here and this on the top so i don't need three millimeters every time i stop so i'm going to take that down you can hear the foot kind of going bonkers as it's as it's going through the settings take it down to the least height because what you'll also find is that um the process and therefore the noise it's almost like a riveting frog uh, my husband describes it as the noise that it makes as it comes up and it checks the bobbin that's just the the way it works um so if if you're doing something like this i take it right down so that it's just a one clunk as it it goes up um but i just wanted to point that out because i don't think people always realize that they do have this choice in here and as i say definitely for different projects different things that you're doing if i'm quilting i would be much higher say i was free motion and again i'm just going to be on one fabric and maybe um, a stitch and tear backing i might start with it quite low and then i might bring it up as i work on the project and i get more and more on it okay and i just wanted to point out that 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 is is doable so i'm just going to say i've set that very low so i'm going to go okay and back we are back with my stitch now i've just come up to the corner here this pointy bit on my tulip so what i'm going to do is i've i've come up my pivot has brought my foot up so that i can actually pivot and as i go round instead of going all the way round just to then go straight down what i want to do is two little stitches not just pivot and then carry on sometimes i do one sometimes i do two depending because what i want to do is create a little bit of space in here because when we turn this through if i just did a really sharp pivot there's absolutely no way this bit of fabric here however much i trim it is going to fit into this corner so i just give myself you know two and these are very small stitches so i'm just going to give myself the equivalent of one ordinary stitch in this case is two of these across before i then continue stitching down and it may seem like something very um simple but i th i think what you find uh, and if we have a little look on here it's it's this where sometimes you'll get like a, a crease in here for example or you can't quite get these these points and you will never get complete point here because obviously there's got to be fabric there is fabric under here and as i say you can't trim it so just allow yourself those two stitches 
and it will make it much much easier so similar thing I'm going to come down here into this center and then I'm just going to take one stitch across there because it's not going to be quite so much bulk going in Same thing up in this corner, one more stitch, and then I'm going to turn it two stitches across, and then I can start following that line down. So, what I tend to do is I do all of my prep beforehand on the machine so that I will end up with a big old pile like this. I'm going to show you how to trim it up, but I do all the stitching first, and then I will actually do the trimming up. So I'm going to go back in and here for example I need to clip so that it's going to be able to turn and as I say on these corners I'm going to snip across just try and lose a little bit of the bulk so that when it turns through there's as little fabric going into this corner as possible. So I would do all of that, have a little pile of them done. Then what we do is we just pull those apart, snip it, because this isn't going to show. So do yourself a favour, do a decent size turning hole on the back. And then we can pull it all through. And what this is doing is, as I say, it is turning under that tiny weeny little turned hem. It's doing it for you, so it's going to hold it. Just be very gentle when you go into those corners. Um, I find a wooden, a bamboo knitting needle is better than a plastic one. It's not quite so sharp normally, so much better for the corners and then for these round bits um, my good old uh, lolly stick guess which lolly mm. whatever the weather because that will help give you really smooth curves we are not going to iron this okay because what I do not want is having created and I think you can see quite a puffy look here just give that a little wriggle if it's not sitting flat but I've created quite a puffy applique um, and if we look at all of these you can see there's there's definitely more sort of spring and bounce going on which is what we want for the next part of the project So once I've done all my shapes, this is now going to be the centre of my block. So this is a nine and a half inch square. Just if, if you wanted to do this particular project, I'll give you the sizes as I go. And I have put on stitch and tear. Doesn't matter. You need some kind of interfacing for this. So either an iron on, but I prefer stitch and tear because then I can take it away. So I don't have anything extra on my actual quilt block before I then add my uh, batting and then quilt it. And I have folded corner to corner so that I've now got a line. I don't I can see it. I don't know if you can actually see it, but there's just a, a folded line so that I can actually arrange these on the line. So I can then make sure they're all nice and even. And I've got enough gap round here so I can lose my quarter inch when I then come to stitch on. Now on this, I'm actually going to put this in the center. Now I want to make this design stuffed. That being the case, the first one I'm going to sew is actually this one. So I'm going to pin that down and then move these pins for a minute out of the way. All will become because I want stuffing inside here so I'm going to stitch this one down first leaving a gap stuff it and then seal that up and then I can go in and stitch these down as well and so let's take a little look at the stitches now um, 
I've put a blue tip needle which is a 75 on here because I want something fairly uh, thin, narrow. I've also put in a monofilament on the top which is, um, sorry I should have shown you that before I put it up there. Um, I think I've got a Madeira one in but it's this and do make sure you get a good quality one of those. Uh, not those cheap and nasty ones that you can get because otherwise it, it, will, it, it just isn't the same. Um, it's very fine and it's very strong. Okay, if you don't have that and you want to try this technique, just get the best match that you can for the actual background that you're working onto. Okay, and again, a reasonably fine thread. So uh, sort of 100, 120 weight, even a bobbin fill, if you've got a bobbin fill like a bottom line or something like that. But looking at stitches... Um, this is the stitch chart for the 5270 QDC. Good range of blanket stitches along here in applique. And generally speaking, you'd be probably using this one for a lot of the stuff that you're doing. Um, I kind of briefly showed you. Hang on, where is it? So on here, I've got a lot of these blanket stitches uh, showing up on here. OK, this one here that's going around the edge, this is actually one of these. Now, when it's in bold, it means it's doing the stitch twice. So you do actually see that stitch much clearer. It's much, much more like a hand done stitch. The one on the edge there is this one where that is done because obviously it goes down and then comes back on the teeth. The gums here is just single stitching rather than double stitching like these ones are here. So any of these stitches are going to give you a slightly different look. OK, I would highly recommend whatever stitches you've got on your machine, stitch them all out and see what they look like, because you'll see straight away which ones are the ones that are going to be better for the job. And bear in mind this one here, for example, I've stitched them in, obviously not in monofilament because you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, but this one here, what I've done is I've actually taken the width setting down so that these teeth going onto the gums are much shorter. So the bite into the actual fabric is much shorter. Now, going along the bus, as you can see, lots and lots on here, middle, right, left hand. This I explain much in much more detail in a previous video so I will put the link to that one underneath if you're going into a plique big time it would be worth watching that basically it's middle right left and that is going to be where the stitch extends so if you adjust the width of the stitch it's it's where it's adjusting from whether it's adjusting from the middle needle position or it's right hand left hand again Try it and see. This is the best way. I think when you stitch this out, you actually see exactly what it's doing and it kind of shows you in a very obvious way what it's doing. So if we go along here, the stitch I'm looking for for this technique, um, which not all machines have, but this one has it. My one has it here. This one here. It's almost like a little V rather than an actual double, which means that it's on here believe it or not, that you can't even see it. It's actually stitched down here. I'll show you on the bottom because look, there it is. That's the bobbin. But when you look on the top, because I've done it in that clear monofilament, look, you can hardly see anything. And that is exactly what we want to achieve this kind of look. OK, so it is going to look like it's hand done. Now, if you don't have this choice of stitches, you might not even have a blanket stitch. If you are on a more basic machine, something with a mechanic, like a mechanical machine, for example, what you need to be looking at is the blind hem stitch and then adjust your settings on that. You won't be able to get them quite to this level, um, but with a monofilament, and again, like I say, I've used an actual thread or you wouldn't be able to see it, um, that will achieve a fairly decent effect okay again it's thread needles experimenting getting the stitch right but I am going to be using this stitch here 
which isn't number 52 on my machine, as I've just <laughs> discovered. There's nothing better than looking at an instruction book for one machine while you're sewing on the other. Um, and I've got that all set up, ready, so that I can come in under here. I've also got my seam ripper. I use this when I'm doing this because the pointy bit here is going to allow me, if necessary, to roll that interfacing underneath so that it doesn't get seen i've got my nice my favorite foot on here which is my open toe and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start sort of halfway down this leaf and i'm going to take my speed down good and low i don't sew slow for many things but certainly for applique i do i'm going to drop that needle so that i know that I'm on the outside here and this is what I mean about being able to just gently roll that under so as I start sewing that stitch is just can you see it's just doing one or two one two three I think and then it grabs onto the top so my job is that lift and turn again so once again I've got my pivot on I'm just going to move this needle out here now it's the trouble when you're on very small shapes I have done smaller, but anyway. So as I turn that, I'm always going to do it from the outside edge of that outside curve. And as I say, I can use this to just gently roll it under. And try and keep those three stitches off the applique shape and only the bite, that little V or the little um, the teeth of your blanket stitch if you're using that one is going on the top okay and I'm squishing that down again and coming round but I think you can see or rather you can't see anything there can you coming around the corner and as i said before well i think i did um, the reason I'm doing this one first is because I want to stuff it and I then want to stuff the bits underneath as well so that I get. Now, can you see, because of this foot, it does ruckle up sometimes because it was hitting the side there. So, again, I'm going to go in with my seam ripper to smooth that down. There we go. So take your time. This is not a technique to be rushed. if you want a really good finish. So we're up the top. There we go. That's just caught on the top and over to the side. And I can st I'm starting to see that white. So again, I can roll that under and then get back off. If you do come very, you know, a couple of stitches on to that applique, it's not going to, because you're using that monofilament, now I want to leave a little gap here. So a couple more stitches. There we go. And what I now want to do... Is I'm going to slide that round to the side and get just a little bit of stuffing. Now at this point I'm using my screwdriver because that's flat and start putting that stuffing in.
you can kind of I don't want to I'm, I'm not you know I'm not interested in making this huge because it's then going to stop the block it's going to distort the block if I make it too um, too squidgy so like I say that wasn't very much if it's difficult to get to I have got a double lift on here so I can lift that up and move it if not just you know finish your stitching and then go back in and start again it's the easiest thing to do but I've kind of developed the art of doing this without breaking off as I go around and look you can already see I'm I've got that nice curve so again I'm going in with that seam ripper just to get that curled under and off we go again to close up that gap so we're down to here and then we're done just going to run over and then do and as I say the beauty of the monofilament is because it's clear you can't see anything but look we have now got a shape if you need to move any of that stuffing around then I normally just go in with a, a pin and just squidge it around a little bit more depends on the shape sometimes some shapes are easier to do this with than others but as I say I, it's quite nice to do it while you're actually going round so there we go look you can see the puffiness that we've got in but it's not so much that it's as I say distorting the, sh the shape of this block but that's also why it's important to have something underneath it um, something like the stitch and tear that's going to give the stability to your fabric while you're doing these kinds of techniques having shown that that technique I've finished off I've left it as a panel actually and part partly because I want to use this as a, an example um, in classes really going forward of what you can do on the machine and I've taken it a step further if you look closely I've quilted it and I have used the hand look quilt stitch again with that monofilament on um, the machine uh, I will put a link below because I did do a video about that stitch as well and can you see how look now there's going to be a debate about this I know there is some people absolutely love quilting to make everything look really really flat I don't I what I love is I love the puckered look of a really old well-loved well-washed quilt and I think we can safely say that I've managed to achieve that with that hand look stitch I've deliberately um messed a bit with the tension to get that slight look because if I'm hand quilting what I do is I then tug it to get this kind of slightly drawn puckered look and as I say that is personally something that I absolutely love in quilting and I know <laughs> I've probably just thrown it out there um so you know answers in the comments uh but it's it's what floats my boat so and I can do it on the machine as well so that's all I was trying to kind of not prove uh, but show you this month so i hope you enjoyed that if you can give a little thumbs up um put anything in the comments if you've got any questions or anything like that uh, and i'll see you next time